there, it's time for story time online. Are you ready for some stories? Did you bring your ears? Did you bring your eyes? Did you bring your tails? You don't have a tail? Well, it's a good thing I have some tails today in our stories. And because our stories today are going to be all about tails. Isn't that right? Let's get our first story, which is all about tails. It's called The Silly Tale Book, and this is written by Mark Brown, who does all of the books about Arthur and D.W. He wrote it and illustrated it, and it is published by Gareth Stevens Publishing. And now you can see why our monkey friend picked this one. Look who's right at the beginning. Who has a tail? I don't. Do you? Look inside and you'll see quite a few. The Silly Tail Book. Now, if you grow a tail, you'll grow only one. But growing more tails could be mm, much more fun. Look at all those tails. One, two, three, four, five. Can you tell what each tail really belongs on? This tail is Moose's tail, so that would be his own. But this curly pink one, that belongs on a pig. And this black one with a white stripe, do you know who that belongs to? Skunk. And this long curly tail belongs to a monkey. And this last one that has stripes, probably a cheetah or a leopard, a big cat. Tails go fast. Tails go slow. A tail will follow wherever you go. Tails grow on all kinds of creatures. Tails have all kinds of features. Might be stripes or wiggly, feathery or flat. Can you identify all of those animals? It's a raccoon and an armadillo. I think I forgot to point out his long, skinny, hairless tail. And this wiggly one is a hippos. How about the feathery one? What animal is that? A turkey. And this flat tail, that belongs to, I think that's our state animal, the beaver. Think of the things a tail can do. Swing from trees or shine a shoe. Kangaroos use them to jump up high and cows use them to swat the flies. There are tails for riding and tails for hiding. Tails with bows walking in rows. A kite tail can be red or blue. Maybe you have a tail or two. Some tails are curly or some straight with spots. Some tails are striped and others are not. Happy tails wag. Sad tails drag. Look for tails on the loud and tails this on the proud. See that peacock's tail? For seal tails flipping and whale's tails flopping and 100 rabbits with cotton tails hopping. There were tails long ago with spikes and bumps there are tails today found behind two humps. Now a tail would look silly up front for a nose. Look at those. <laughs> it belongs on the end 
that's where it goes. And you know what? I believe that's the end of this story. So we did see all kinds of tales, didn't we? Well, can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Could you stand up? Because it's time for you to jump. Can you jump, jump? Jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Now, are you ready for a longer story? This is called The Tale of a Tale. It's written by Judith Bodner and illustrated by John Sanford. And it's a story that takes place in the wintertime. I thought it'd be good for a warm summer day. It's published by Lothrop Lee and Shepherd Books and Morrow of New York City. And you can see the animals. Does it feel cooler just seeing that snow? We won't see it here for a while. Once, there was, or there wasn't. There once was a fox. And like all foxes, he was very greedy and he thought himself a very clever creature. More than anything else in the world, more than tender spring biddies from the hen house, more than juicy red raspberries in the summertime, that fox loved to eat fish. Now, late one winter afternoon, he caught a whole basket full of trout and his nose twitched and his mouth watered as he tied the basket to his back and trotted home. Look at all those fish. Wow. Now, the moment he set the basket on the table, he reached in and mm -mm, gobbled down a few luscious fish. And then he built himself a fire and set out his plate and fork just the way his old mother had taught him. He had just sat down to enjoy his feast when, cup, 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 there came a knock at the door. Oh, blast, muttered the fox. Go away, I'm busy, he called. What an enticing odor, my friend, said a too familiar voice. A bear poked the tip of his big black nose in the door and sniffed. Mmm, now these are what I call fish. Mmm, give me some, won't you? I have an awful longing for fish. Go away, I'm sleeping, said the fox. What sort of welcome is that for your friend, wheedled the bear. You're welcome to hang your hunger on the rack, friend, said fox. It took me hours to catch these fish, and I didn't do all that work to fill your belly. But the bear hadn't seen even a fingerling since summer, and the fox's den, oh, smelled as if it was piled to the rafters with fish. So he knocked again. I beg you, friend, show me how you caught them, he pleaded. 
And then, thinking he was as clever as any fox, I, I have no idea how to catch fish. Oh, imagine a bear who can't even catch fish, grumbled the fox. And he added a log to the fire and then he grinned. My very best friend, Sir Bear, he called. You want to eat fish, do you? Well, then go directly to the lake. Go this very evening when dusk has fallen and the fish won't recognize you. The fox chuckled softly. Hang your tail in the water and don't twitch a muscle. And when the sun smiles above the treetops, give your tail a good, strong yank. The bear scratched his ear. Why? he asked. Why? Why, there never was anything better for a fishing pole than a bear's tail, said the fox. You pull a whole barrel full of fish out of the lake and without even getting your toes wet. The fox banked the fire even higher and sat down to enjoy his supper alone. Well, the bear didn't want to leave all those beautiful fish behind. Still, he thanked the fox politely and trotted away toward the woods. He soon stood right beside the lake, licking his lips and humming a fishing tune. I'm not sure what a fishing tune sounds like, but he hummed it anyway. Perfect, he thought. I'm just in time. The sun has fallen asleep and the moon is only a nail paring. The fish will never know that I'm here. So he lumbered to the edge of the water and he stuck his tail in as deep as it would go. And then he waited. That night, such a chill wind blew over the plain that the bear's tongue nearly froze to the roof of his mouth, and his thick brown coat turned white with frost as he sat beside the lapping water. He waited, and he shivered. The wind moaned, and the night dragged on. The lake became a frothy sheet of solid ice. The bear slapped his thighs and blew on his paws, and he waited for the fish to bite. Well, at dawn, he could bear the aching cold no longer. Friend Fox is very kind to teach me a new way to fish, he thought, but I want to go home now. But when the bear tried to step away from the lake, oh, he howled in pain. His tail was trapped in the ice. Well, he tugged and he tugged, but it was stuck fast. Higher and higher rose the sun, harder and harder tugged the bear. All right, fish, he cried at last. You and I are leaving now. And he gathered all his strength and gave a mighty heave. That means he pulled really hard. Aye, aye. Oh, that poor bear. He tore the lake right out of the bed. And he saw not a single fish on his tail for all that work. All he saw was ice. That lake was heavier than 10 blacksmith's anvils. The bear's back felt as if it were broken and his tail as though it had been torn right off. He hopped on his left foot and then his right and he roared. And when he thought about that fox, Surrounded by heaps of tasty fish shining in the firelight. Oh, he roared even louder. He had a thing or two to say to that fox, friend or not. The bear stomped away with the frozen lake still stuck on his tail. The sun rose higher still and the bear's icy fur began to thaw. The lake gleamed, shivering in the light, and it soon began to drip melting. With every step, the bear heard drip, drip, plop. But he didn't look back. He just kept on hobbling toward that wicked fox's den. At last, he reached the woods. Drip, drip, plop. 
The bear took three strides into the trees and he felt an awful yank on his poor sore tail. Ay, ay, he cried. That lake of ice would not fit between the trees. He tugged and pulled and struggled. Drip, drip, plop. Tug, ay. Oh, just you wait, Fox, roared the bear. My very best friend, indeed. He sat down in a puddle and he thought dark thoughts. Drip, drip, plop. Drip, drip, plop. At last he turned his head and there behind him, on the very path he had followed, was now a little stream. And gleaming and wriggling in the shallow water, do you know what the bear saw? He saw fish, dozens of lovely shimmering fish, hundreds of smelly, fresh, delicious fish, more fish than he could count. Oh, Fox, my very best friend indeed, he shouted. The bear leaped and spun he slapped his tail against the trees and the ice shattered into a million sparkling slivers. The bear's paw flashed out and three frozen mackerel, those are fish, were caught on his long curved claws and he plopped them into his mouth, hop a la, mm, and he swallowed them in a single gulp, yum, yum. And it took bear three days to eat all those fish. And when he finished, he was so full and sleepy that he could barely walk. His belly practically dragged on the ground as he waddled home and his tail barely pained him at all. Now the bear was much too tired to stop anywhere along the way, but polite as ever, he dropped a note in the mail before he fell into bed. Dear friend Fox, the fish were delicious, but your method of fishing is very hard on the tail. Next time, why don't you try the new stream? See you in spring, your very best friend, Bear. And that's the end. That is a strange way of catching fish, don't you think? Maybe sometime you could come and borrow some of the fishing poles we have here at the library and try fishing down in our lake. All right, well, let's do a finger play about something you might eat. I'm not sure all of you like to eat fish, but I bet you might eat a hot dog, unless you're vegetarian. So get your pan ready. Is it all nice and hot? I've got five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So now one little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, this is a fun new book I think we've had at the library. We just got it last month and I saved it just for today's program. It's called Animals Brag About Their Bottoms. This is written by Maki Sato. I believe Maki also does the illustrations. And this is published by Greystone Kids. And do you see what's on there? What kind of animal is that? That has a really fuzzy tail and big long ears. It's a bunny. And he's saying, look at my bottom. So we're going to be looking at a lot of bottoms. My bottom is such a round bottom and so cute, don't you think? I have a round bottom too, so round and so big. Just look. 
Did you think you'd be looking at a hippo bottom today? <laughs> My bottom's even bigger. So much bigger. What animal is this? Are you ready to look at his bottom? Look how big. Look at all our bottoms. They're covered in stripes. Stripes of all kinds. Don't our bottoms look stylish? Can you recognize the animals? I recognize tiger and zebra. I can't remember what this one is. I'm wondering if will they tell us at the end? I have to find out. Because this doesn't have stripes all over like the tiger and the zebra, just on the back. What about my bottom? Is it patterned like the rest of me? I think I'd say yes. Our bottoms are white, black, and black and white. We've got a polar bear, a black bear, a panda bear, and a taper. Our bottoms are the same colors as our faces. Did our faces copy our bottoms? Or did our bottoms copy our faces? That way you can't tell if the animal's coming towards you or going away. Line up, line up. Heart-shaped bottoms all in a row. It's a white-tailed deer. Our bottoms are fluffy bottoms. Even when it's cold, we stay warm. Our bottoms are tough bottoms. When something bangs against them, it doesn't bother us at all. Our bottoms are spiky bottoms. They're amazing too. Don't you think? It's a porcupine, hedgehogs. Everyone's proud of their bottoms. I think. Such wonderful bottoms, each and every one should be appreciated. Thank you, bottoms. We enjoyed your story. Let's see, I think we could do one more finger play. And I'm not sure. Maybe we should put monkeys up in the tree today because they probably would be swinging by their tails. There were five little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. But along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap one of your monkeys. I don't like to pretend that Mr. Crocodile eats them, so I hide them. Four little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So three little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So two little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So how many are left? One little monkey is swinging in the tree, Teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So now no little monkeys are swinging in the tree. I'd better watch out so he won't catch me. All right, let's see here. Well, I think we'll have one more story about a tail. 
This is called Tom's Tale by Linda Jennings with illustrations by Tim Warnes, and it's published by Little Brown and Company. Now Tom was the sort of piglet who never was quite satisfied. When he considered his tale, he was not pleased at all. It was a neat little tail, but it was all curly twirly. Tom wanted it straight. Now in all other ways, Tom was a fine little pig. He had a nice pale pink color with dirty patches here and there that when he wallowed in the mud and he slurped and snuffled in the trough with all his brothers and sisters and made the usual piggy noises. But oh, how he wished he had a straight tail. Now, Sam the sheepdog had a lovely black plumy tail and Hannibal the horse had a long swishy tail. And Geraldine the Jersey cow had a thin stringy tail with a little tuft at the end. And even the rat's tail is less curly than mine, said Tom miserably. Now very soon all the animals on Apple Tree Farm were fed up with Tom's complaints. Why don't you get your tail straightened, said Hannibal. How, asked Tom. Well, like this, said Hannibal, and he put his big hoof on the edge of Tom's tail and said, now walk away. Well, Tom squealed and squeaked with the pain of Hannibal's heavy hoof, but then as he began to walk, his tail stretched out and when it had uncurled to the very end, Hannibal the horse let go. Back sprung the tail, and Tom hurtled forward. That certainly didn't work for him. Ouch, yelled Tom and Sam, the sheepdog, together, because Tom landed on him. Tell you what, said Sam, picking himself up. Why don't I take hold of your tail, and you can lead me along, and that should straighten it. So Tom took Sam for a walk past the pig pens, around the pond, over the buttercup meadows, and very soon Tom's tail, oh, it ached and ached. Let go, he cried. Bing! Back sprang his tail into the usual curly twirly state. Tom felt miserable. Now Geraldine the Jersey cow looked at Tom and chewed thoughtfully, and suddenly she had a very good idea. She told it to Sam, who took hold of Tom's tail again and stretched it. Oh, it hurt terribly. And then he pushed the tail into a big patch of gooey mud, squelchy mud. He made Tom lie with his tail covered in mud for a very long, long time until the mud dried. And Tom's tail was set into a long, thin pencil shape. Yippee, cried Tom. He twirled around trying to see his new straight tail. Ouch, said Sam. Tom had poked him right in the chest. You look very silly, said his mother, but Tom didn't care. He liked to be different. I'll try to wag my tail like Sam does, he said. Whack, oh, the tail hit Tom's sister in the face oh, and then stuck his brother on the bottom. Stop that, said his mother. So when it was dark, Tom's mother gathered all her piglets for the night and she, they liked to snuggle up in a big piggy heap, but Tom's tail got in the way. Go away, cried all his brothers and sisters, and they chased Tom right out of the sty. Poor Tom, he tried to curl up against the farmyard wall, but it wasn't very comfortable to lie down with a tail that was as stiff as a pencil. At long last, though, he fell asleep. And in the night, it began to rain. Tom tried to sleep as best he could. And as it rained, why that hard mud on his tail softened and slid off. And by the time morning came, his tail was a curly twirly just as it had ever been. Grunting happily, Tom went back to the sty. Who wants a straight tail anyway, Tom said later as he pushed and shoved into the trough with all his brothers and sisters. However, 
If I could only have a long, elegant nose like Hannibal, said the horse, instead of this silly snout, I could really get at the food. Poor Tom. Never satisfied, right? <laughs> All right, well, I think it's time for us to wiggle our fingers and our toes and our shoulders and our nose and our elbows and slap our knees and stretch and get ready, please, for our flannel board story. I hope there's some good tales in it. Well, the elephant was chasing a black and orange striped tail. Can you guess who it was? It belonged to Tiger. Now Tiger was chasing a short brown tail. Move Tiger back just a little bit. Can you guess whose tail that is? Let's see. It belonged to Bear. Bear is chasing a curly pink tail. After our last story, I think you should know who that belongs to. There's the curly pink tail. So who do you think it belongs to? You are right if you said a pig. Now the pig is chasing a big bushy tail. Whose tail is that? Did you say fox? You're right. The fox is chasing a black and white feather tail. Hmm. Who has a feathered tail? Did you say some kind of bird? Mm -hmm. So what kind of bird do you think it could be that Fox would be chasing? Probably not a robin or an eagle. But if you said duck, you'd be right. The duck is chasing Let's move it back. a brown spotted tail. Who's that? Let's look and see. I think I know. Did you guess dog? Now the dog is chasing a black and gray striped tail. Who do dogs often chase? Cat. The cat is chasing a tiny pink tail. Better run fast. Because cats like to catch. Mice. And mouse is chasing A 
dark gray tail. And who does that belong to? Well, that was the beginning of our story. And that is called Tales Chasing Tales. So I hope you enjoyed the tales that I shared today. Are you ready to say goodbye here, monkey? Oh, sure, you can do that. He's going to wave his tail at you to say bye-bye. And thank you for joining us for stories. Should we do it again sometime? He says we should. So we'll see you next time that it's time for story time online. Bye-bye.